CBS 46 News presents Public Affairs on Peach. And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Public Affairs on Peach. I'm Bobby Capel. Don't look now, but your taxes will be due before you know it. Fortunately, you have two extra days this year, April 15th falling on a Saturday, so tax day will be pushed back to Monday, April 17th. Our guest today, financial advisor, Manka Kaur and Andrew Paulos from Paulos Accounting and Consulting Incorporated. He's the tax man. She's the wealth management person. All right, thanks for coming in on this Saturday you, morning. Thank you. All right, uh, Andrew, let's start with you. We are headed into uh, tax season here. What is the biggest thing you're hearing from clients? What's the biggest thing you're seeing from folks out there? Uh, folks are trying to get ready, of course. Uh, so just uh, right now, still early, technically. Uh, because a lot of people procrastinate. So uh, record keeping, getting ready, trying to figure out what's going to happen uh, as far as this tax season. and. Uh, of course, tax planning for 2017 uh, with the new administration. Yeah, and we're talking about the Trump administration there. We'll get into that later in the show because we do have a half an hour. Um, <laughs> I want to ask you as we kind of head, and I want to take it back to like 20,000 feet. You head in as a wealth management person. Uh, what are you looking at? There are certain spots you can have tax advantages uh, in your investments, uh, whether it's 401ks or what. What are some of the things people that are working out there right now can do? Obviously not for this year because this year's gone and done as far as tax season, 2016 rather, but for the year going forward that can maybe advantageous to them and keep some money that instead of would go to the, gov uh, would go to the government. Well, actually, I beg to defer. I think there are certain things you can do now um, as well because we're still about a month out. Um, from your taxes. So you can go back and take a look and see, hey, did I make a you know, contribution to my IRA for 2016? And if you qualify, I mean, you can definitely have a discussion with your tax advisor about this. If you qualify, um, you could potentially put away some money if you're under the age of uh, 50, then 5,500. Uh, if you're over the age of 50, then 6,500. Um, and potentially uh, have that as a deductible um, break for your taxes for 2016 still. Now, if you're planning for the future, there's a few things you can do to go back and take a look at, you know, what are the advantages that your employer uh, provides to you? Are you maxing those out? Um, because that's a um, dollar for dollar tax deduction on your taxes as well, uh, your 401k. A um, couple of other things, I mean, still as being month out, I'd say take a look at uh, if you're a small business owner or if you're a 1099 um, uh, worker, do you uh, have an option to do a SEP IRA? And if you already have one set up, then do you need to put some more money into that um, so it can still help you with your 2016 uh, taxes as well? Do you have any tax tips for folks that are still in 2016 mode and trying to kind of get that together where they might be able to save some money? Uh, yeah, it just depends really on if it's a small business owner, as kind of Monka mentioned. Take me through, start with small business owner and then take me to the individual. Small business owners, your big ones typically tend to be your mileage if you're taking the standard mileage deduction, which this year has decreased from 57 and a half cents to 54 cents a mile. And just explain to explain what that is for the person out there that may not know, it's if, if you're driving for a business like a sales business or something like that. Correct. It's not commuting, right? right. So it's, it's not driving from home to your job. Uh, but if you drive more, for your job. This is more for an independent contractor, so someone who's self-employed. Let's just say you have, for example, a home office. Mm -hmm. uh, the minute you leave from your home office and you drive to go see a client or a prospective client. You can or get 57 cents a mile. 54, 54, cents, 54 a mile. cents a mile. Correct. And that's so a straight deduction or is that a... That's uh, a dollar for dollar right, deduction. Okay. Yeah, if you're a 1099, if you, if you effectively are self-employed uh, or are 1099 uh, independent contractor, uh, chances are you're filing on a Schedule C as part of your 1040 tax return. So those kind of deductions fall against the gross revenues, the gross income, so it's a dollar for dollar. And deduction. I want to get to these other ones, but that just reminded me of something um, for freelancers, which is basically mm -hmm. what a 1099 worker is. Um, if you don't have health insurance through a spouse, uh, or, or if you're under 26 or whatever it is now on the uh, Obamacare mandate, if you're on your own on health insurance and you're buying on the market, you can write that off too, right? And I don't think a lot of people know that, and I think that's a, a, a big waste yeah. of money for a lot of people. Correct, Bobby. Uh, so if, if you're a sole proprietor or a freelancer, if you're filing a Schedule C effectively uh, and you have your own health insurance that's 
paid out of your pocket, then you can deduct that against your Schedule C income. So that's something that folks oftentimes miss. Uh, that can be thousands of dollars. It depends on, yeah, it depends on how much you're paying. I mean, you know, obviously we know how expensive the insurance has gotten under the Affordable Care Act, so certainly that can be uh, thousands of dollars. So there's, there's things that folks can do if they're freelancers, if they're self-employed, independent contractors. Uh, they're all in the same boat. Uh, as far as the deductions that reduces uh, your, your income down to your net because ultimately you're being taxed on the net income, not on the gross. So if you receive a 1099, that's a forty or fifty thousand dollars. You're not being taxed on that. You have to offset with your deductions first, your business expenses, and then you would be taxed on the net of that. All right. So what are some other areas folks can look at individually? Uh, you know, individually. You want to obviously look at things that are often missed. It depends on uh, if you can itemize, so your itemized deductions are crucial. Uh, one thing that I often tend to see folks miss if they're self-preparing, then they, uh, clients that come to me as new clients is uh, mortgage, uh, mortgage insurance, the PMI. Uh, give you an example, I was working on a return the other day, and for whatever reason, the bank uh, that had sent out the 1098 interest statement uh, actually had the PMI uh, listed out on the top of the recap versus in the form typical person probably would have missed that in this taxpayer's case. It was about $3,600, $3,700 PMI. Figure out a 20% tax bracket, that's about seven, $800 uh, extra. Nice tax. chunk of change yes. right there. All right, good to know. Um, go going into uh, tax season here, as I guess, we, what would you consider tax season specifically? Anytime after January 1st, basically? For me, for me it, starts, <laughs> it starts on January 2nd. <laughs> At least I start to get, a, to get ahead of, of the game. But really, for, you know, tax season, I think we're coming into it now, right? Between March 15th to April, is going to be the peak of season. That's really when folks, the media starts covering it, yep. folks start thinking about it, that's when it all begins. Maka, can folks do this on their own? Um, I think it depends. So I, there's no like one size fits all. Um, I really have to say that you have to take a look and assess your own situation and sort of figure out, hey, is my return a simple return or is it a complex return? I, I think that would be the first question that I would uh, try to answer. If, for, um, if an individual doesn't have any dependents, if they don't have charitable contributions. I just um, want to break this down to like normal lay person's language here. That yeah. Dependents would be like children, yes. uh, things like that. Yes, <laughs> that's correct. What are there other terms we're using here? I will decode yeah. well, for the people. Or if you, if, you, uh, if you give to charity. Yes. Or, you know, if, so if you, you give money to charity, and that uh, can be even in the form of if you're like a, a Georgia Bulldog fan, and I, I don't know what it's called the, here, but Bill I'm. Bill Hartman Fund. Yeah, like the, the, uh, the club that kind of gets you the good tickets and mm -hmm. all that stuff. It's, it's scholarship money. Sure. That's deductible stuff. Yeah. We're going to come back after this um, because okay. I'm being wrapped here on a hard break. But we will be right back after this and we'll continue this discussion on public affairs on Peach.